I did a full tour of the garden a couple of weeks ago and one or two eagle-eyed troublemakers, Mick Watson being one of them, pointed out that they didn't see any Brussels and that's because I don't grow Brussels. I've tried in the past, I've tried them from seed, I've tried them from transplants, I've nurtured the things, I've compressed the ground so as not to get root rock, I've tried every trick in the book and in all the years I've been growing Brussels, we've ne never managed more than a plateful each, total. So I gave up, never going to grow Brussels again. But I was down at the nursery the other day <laughs> and the almost given away plants uh, at this time of year that they no longer want. And in the rescue section, for 10 cents each, I found these. 10 cents. And there are two, three, four, there are 16 plants here and it cost me a total of 30 cents, which is about 18 pence, just say a penny each. And I thought at that price, I can't go wrong. So I'm gonna try growing Brussels again. <laughs> um, but I think I know where I went wrong last time. I tried too hard this year. I'm just going to stick them in and let them get on with it. <laughs> I have four of this type and this type's called Bubbles, which I think was probably one of Michael Jackson's favourite things to munch on. No airs and graces, I'm just going to stick them out. One. Three. Four. That's it. I'm not going to touch them. I'm just going to leave them to do their thing, which is probably going to be die. And this type are called... Brussels. And now to put the tag in. That should remind me what it is in there that's dead. That was a total of 14 Brussels sprout plants. They cost me 30 cents, so let's say two cents each. Now I'm gonna set a challenge, but no one else is in it. It's a challenge to myself. The challenge is to get 30 Brussels sprouts <laughs> that are worthy of eating by Christmas. Um, I reckon I'm going to do it. This year, I think I've got, I've, I've got, I know what it is that I need to do. Nothing. Just leave them. Watch this space. And these are my beefsteak tomatoes. I'm not done very well on the beefsteaks this year. I only had two plants. One of them got leaf curl. And these ones now, they're showing some signs of blossom end blight. And that means they're not getting enough calcium. Probably a little bit, little bit too much nitrogen earlier on. And we can fix it by, or we can try and fix it by adding some calcium to the soil. But in my experience, it doesn't really work. It's not the fact that the calcium isn't present. It's the fact that the plant's not processing the calcium. And that's usually because it's put on too much foliage growth. So we've got to try and remove some of the nitrogen from the soil. And what I'm going to try and do is give it some real tomato food that's high in calcium and very low in nitrogen. We'll see if that works. I do not eat raw tomatoes. I don't mind them cooked and I don't mind them in sauces. 
but raw tomatoes are not for me. So to do the taste testing today, we have Mrs. Coleman. These are the sweet million cherry tomatoes. What are these like, Mrs. Coleman? I'll tell you in a second. Oh, those are good. They are? Very good. Okay. Sweet. Okay, a little bit smaller ones over here. We have the Sweet 100 mm. cherry tomatoes. And these ones, Mrs. Coleman? Mm, they're not as nice as those. You like the first ones, do you? I do. Okay. Skins are a little thick. Let's try a Juliet. And the Juliet? Tell you in a second. Oh, those are really good. Yeah, really good. they have a really good write-up mm. and review and stuff like that. Mm. It's like a grape tomato. A little nicer than even aroma. Yeah, it's, mm. uh, well, first time we've grown them, but maybe we'll grow them again because we've got lots of fruit on mm. them. I think it's going to be good. Awesome. Thank you, Mrs. Coleman. Thumbs up. As you can see, we have lots of tomatoes coming. And Mrs. Coleman's kind of picking them as they ripen. <laughs> What's in bloom? What's in bloom? What's in bloom? And this week in bloom, the lavender, or as I like to call it, the Bee Hotel. It's very noisy here right now. This is Hidcote Blue Lavender, which is an improved version of Hidcote English Lavender. It's deer resistant, it's rabbit resistant, it attracts butterflies, it attracts bees. It's extremely fragrant. What more could you ask for from a plant? Also in bloom, not just this week, but for the first time ever, my yucca plant. The yucca plant's sword-like leaves are extremely sharp at the tips, so handle them with care. The creamy white flowers, they bloom best in full sun, although its flowering can be sporadic. I've had this one about three or four years, and it really is the first time it's ever bloomed. This is one of my Jack O'Lantern pumpkins. It's looking all right. I've got a couple on this vine, and I think I'll leave it at a couple. Use these at Halloween, but uh, if I chop them off, maybe these ones will get bigger. I don't know. Here we go. But I'm happy with this. As you can see, the growler's in full view, which means it's time for a beer. <laughs> I got a message this week uh, from a subscriber. It's the first time he's ever left a comment called Colin Pearson saying that maybe you should go a little bit more in depth when it's time for a beer. And I've had other people too saying that maybe you should start off a different channel about tasting beers in Canada. Unfortunately, I don't have time for that. But yeah, like I say, there's always time for a beer. I was at uh, Fieldhouse Brewing yesterday. And this is a Dutch pale ale, which is very nice. It's like a Belgian style pale ale. But I prefer the Dutch to Belgians, eh? <laughs> Cheers. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave a comment, hit the like button, or subscribe.